Now that you guys are acquainted with the ideas of racial bias and unequal opportunity, I'm here to talk to you guys about Larry Idleong, a Filipino American that history widely forgot about and how he stood up against these systems in his journey for justice. <laughs> Larry Long was born in the Philippines on October 25th, 1913, and he grew up learning about the wonders of America. At a young age, he dreamed about becoming a lawyer and using his profession to help out the poor in the Philippines. So, after saving up some funds, he decided to buy a boat ticket, because planes weren't invented yet, and use that ticket to go all the way to America. But once he landed here, he found out that Filipinos who were already working here worked as farmers who traveled all across California to pick fruits and vegetables. This broke his dreams of being a lawyer into, because he realized that the reality of the Filipinos that were living here were that they were having a hard time trying to make a decent living. During his time working on sugar beet farms back in the 1920s, he noticed that his fellow Filipino workers worked for 12 hours straight with no breaks. This meant that they were picking sugar beets in farm fields on hot days from morning to the evening, and they had to deal with dangerous pesticides, which were essentially chemicals used specifically to kill bugs. After many years of working in these conditions, he would face inequality for the first time when he worked as a janitor at Fry Lettuce Farms for 12 cents an hour. His fellow Filipino workers were cutting heads of lettuce for 10 cents an hour, while white workers were working inside sheds for 15 cents an hour, and all they were doing were washing and packaging lettuce. So, the shed workers decided to work with the Filipinos to go on a strike, which is essentially a movement where a bunch of workers come together and they decide to get their needs met by stopping their work completely. Their demands were simple, a 10 cent raise just to make sure that everybody was being paid equally. And even though Larry was a janitor, he decided that he would join his fellow Filipinos and the other workers because he felt like he needed to stand with his people. In fact, when he was asked by his boss why he would join such a movement, Larry responded by saying that these are my people. If I stay here in the office, I would be a chicken. And after three weeks of striking, their boss finally agreed to give them the raise that they desired, but only to the white shed workers. The other Filipinos who worked a tougher job didn't get the benefit of the raise, and in addition to that, they were replaced outright, meaning that they lost their jobs while trying to strike for a better, more equal pay. This made Larry realize that there was a racial bias affecting the opportunities that they were striking for, meaning that even though two groups were striving for the same goal, only one of them was able to actually get something out of it, while the other wasn't able to because there was a system in place that was favoring that other group over the other, meaning that select groups of people would be left in the dust. His work as a labor organizer led him to his biggest achievement, a victory royale for farmers both then and now. He joined the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee and met with Mexican activists Dolores Huerta and Cesar Chavez, who were in charge of the National Farm Association, or the NWFA for short. Larry and the AWOC demanded that the Filipino grape workers in California be paid $1.40 an hour, in addition to an extra 25 cents for every box of grapes that they packed. Through their unity, they were able to get their demands met until they reached a grape farm in Delano. The grape growers there basically said no. And you know what that means? They went on strike to get their demands met. Because Larry didn't want to give up on his people and he wanted to ensure that workers were being treated fairly, he was able to rally people to his cause. Even in their numbers, Larry understood that they needed help. He understood that in order to stand up against the systems that were oppressing his people, he needed the help of Dolores Huerta, Cesar Chavez, and the NWFA in their strike against the Delano Grape Company. These became the roots for the Great Delano Grape Strike that lasted for a whole five years and was remembered by history as one of the greatest movements towards equality and justice.